YouTube, let's get active. Now, this video is a bit different from the next down in that, yes, there is a simulation going on, but it's from week one that I recorded way back and just want to talk Wilson and the Broncos, specifically what's going on on the field and the out of pocket weird responses from a lot of dudes following the NFL. Now, anyone watching can easily identify that the Broncos are struggling, particularly on offense. They aren't looking good in the win column and their movement up the field isn't smooth to say the least. I want to highlight two sources of most of those issues, which are the coaching and the QB. I'll start with coaching as I don't think it's as obvious as it should be. Now in week one, there was a lot of play calls coming down to Wilson that were just flat out late, like coming out of the huddle trying to line people up with eight seconds on the clock late. This is somewhat persisted throughout the season. The coaching staff is unsure of what to dial up. Like maybe they're having issues identifying the defensive matchups. Perhaps it's not having quite the comfort level with the players on the field and their abilities. Not really sure. A prime example from the last two or three games, the Broncos, although acquiring Russell Wilson, continue to predominantly run the ball the first two downs of almost every series in the red zone. Alert. They are terrible in red zone efficiency, especially with the run, at least from what I can see. So when they try to punch it in with the pass, it's late and the defense can get more creative with the coverage scheme. They have a 50% success rate on fourth down attempts, but they have too many of them. And that's an issue having to try and force that last play that the way the Broncos do so often. And on goal to go, it looks even worse as they continue to lack the ability to punch it in for the touchdown despite the fact that they do in fact move the ball up the field, even if it's not pretty. Now on to Russell Wilson, who for some is continuing to do what he did in Seattle, except move around. Wilson is missing open targets from the God angle we all have looking down on the play. Most of Wilson's passes go up the sidelines, which again is typical of what he did in Seattle. But there are opportunities that are underneath the coverage, even in the middle of the field, and he's not locating them on time and holding the ball for too long. Now, is that his comfort level? I don't know, but there's no argument that the team is stacked with players who collectively could be winning more. So why not? Seven weeks in now, all I can say is to run the plays faster, particularly with the pass. And I don't mean screens. They are doing those, and I don't think they're built well for that, at least not right now. They kind of just get blown up. They have the players to make the slant routes work well. They need to use them more, get the ball out faster, and give the run game a chance to actually pick up more than 20 yards with the running backs. As is, most linebackers against the Broncos don't have to do much. Then we can see more of Russ move outside of the pocket again and find a play outside of scrambling desperation and more like just a regular bootleg. To my last observation of the situation, there are a lot of dudes out here hating on Russ for perhaps off field reasons and they don't know him, okay? <laughs> they weren't a teammate, they haven't played in the NFL, they're just fixated on not liking this guy. Now me, I only care about his on field performance. If he weren't playing, I wouldn't know about him like most of the other 8 billion people on the planet. The comments that have been put towards him are flat out weird, obsessive, and negative. Like, why are you wanting to see him fail? So all I'm saying is don't get mad at your coworker who wants to see you fail and perhaps even sets it up. The negative energy people putting out, they never want themselves. So keep it pushing. It's football, okay? <laughs> Some things work, others don't and others still take time. Yes, he comes with a hefty price tag, but he's still playing and he's still getting paid. That ain't coming out your pocket. I just see a lot of people taking their own lives and how they might be doing and scapegoating. Every year, every time, there's at least one player this happens to. Like I said in my video about Call of Duty, being negative makes money. A lot of YouTube videos take the negative angle, slam people, get clicks, the ad dollars roll in. It's that Pavlov's bell kind of shit, you know? 
But if you're not in the organization, it really doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't. Keep it pushing. Enjoy football. Seattle and their season, I wasn't in the organization, right? I just see Geno Smith having another opportunity to start in the NFL, and so far, so good. It's fun. Get back to that. Keep the drama. And if, if I'm just focusing on the AFC West, a lot of moves were made, a lot of money spent to dethrone the Kansas City Chiefs, and seven weeks in, it's looking like a wash. <laughs> so until the next video, this has been Agent R. Prove your meta and focus on you. Peace.